So the scenario I chose is Airborne Samurai A85 from one of the old annuals. It's available again in PDF form. So it might even be in Rising Sun, but I don't know that for sure. So we have 16 Dutch squads, 12 Japanese squads coming in by paradrop. Okay, so look at the special rules. We have mild breeze, that's important in paradrops, uh, coming in from the north. PTA, PTO terrain is in effect. The, um, the Dutch can use hip, but we're not interested in that since it's a little solitaire playing. Japanese morale is considered underlined. Japanese receive air support. We're not worried about that either because we're only playing out the first half of the first turn just to get the mechanics down. Okay, so let's get that out of here. Now, let's look at the cloaking box. So this is what we did. Each squad gets its own parachute counter and they are allowed stacking with up to one leader and one support weapon. Now the support weapons are, go are going to have their own parachute counter because they're going to drift separately most likely separately from the uh, squad itself so so let's take a look so we can at this point take the support weapons and put them with the stick and I'll explain sticks in a second so I'm giving so this will be a wing Five, has to be five um, parachute counters make up one wing. You're allowed having one wing in your total order of battle that is less than five. If they had given me, um, let's say, 17 squads, then I would have five, 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 and then the overlap would go a, a short wing of two. Right. So we're going to place mortar with this group, mortar with this group and a mortar with this group. All right, so that should be it. We have our support weapons set. All right, so we go through the rules real quickly. Okay, during the turn of the airdrop, uh, the attacker is not allowed doing anything except the airdrop itself. So um, we already went over the wings and the sticks the leaders do not have leadership. Here's some very important notes. Leaders do not have leadership until they appear on the board, and that'll be during the advance phase. Support weapons have their own para counter. We went over that. All support weapons must be dismantled if possible. Support weapon parachutes stay on board until recovered. So during the advance phase, all the actual um, people will show up. The parachutes will disappear. Not only will the support weapon parachutes not disappear until recovered, but they're going to be flipped upside down so you don't know which one is which. you got to kind of remember that. Contents are not considered concealed except upward landings. All right. Dropping. Each wing secretly designates a drop point prior to setup. So before we see the Dutch setup, we have to um, pick our drop points. So there's going to be one drop point for each wing. Not for, for each stick, but for each wing. So I picked three drop points before the game began. Okay, then we go to the different fire phases, the different procedures, and then just to remember, uh, Germans in 1942, they do not land with their full strength. They come down as 228s, not the crew counters, but they have a value of 228, somewhere available in different modules. I know they were available definitely in the Crete module from Heat of Battle. They might have been available in other modules too from Bounding Fire. Bounding Fire is usually pretty good about making such things. Um, yeah, and that's it. So now let's go through our different phases. So pre-game, we choose our drop points. That is already done. Rally phase, we place the center para marker on each one of our drop points. So we have one drop point right here that I chose. We have one drop point right here that I chose. And we have one drop point right here that I chose. Okay, so 
That's it. Now we go to the rally. Uh, we go to, uh, we roll for accuracy. So on a one to a three, it's accurate. Now it's not gonna be accurate, but it's gonna be pretty accurate. So let's uh, roll for this one and we get a two. So he is there. And we roll for this one and we get a two. He is there. Then we roll for the last one and we get a five. So on a one, two, three, it's accurate. On a four, five, six, it's not accurate. So if it's not accurate, now we roll randomly for which board it lands on. So we will do, and the board that it was supposed to land on is included in this. We do one, two, three, four, five, six. So it is still landing on this board. And then we do direction distance. Then we do five, four. So one, two, three, four. So that is the new drop point. Now that that's been done, we can put all the sticks and the wings down. So let's start with this one. Now I chose a north-south direction. What's important is you, your planes can come in from any direction you want, but they all have to come in from the same direction. So I cannot, as an example, put those guys down that way and then put these guys down like this. That's illegal. So if some of them come down that way, all of them have to come because the planes are flying together same direction here we go and here we go all right they are down now we put the parachutes for the support weapons with the guys that are coming down all right now we roll Now it's the movement phase, so rally phase is over. Now we go drift die roll for every one. So let's start down here. And he rolls four, five. Very interesting because he is going to come off the board. He's two hexes off the board. The next guy, the support weapon, will be four, one. Parachute, big parachute counter would be three, two. Support weapon, six, two. Parachute counter, big one, one, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, one, six, two. Moving on to the next wing. Go five, three. Two, six. Six, four. Three, five. Last wing, one, two, three. Somebody will capture that. Four, five. That's two that's coming right down in the woods. Six, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, two. One, two. And that's it. We're done. That had come down from a different wing. Because there's light gusts in play, it's going to drift down. Everything is going to drift downwind to hexes. Everything is getting pushed. Don't forget our off-board guy.
Oops, don't know if I did him one or two. And that's it. Okay, now everybody can, everybody that's not an assault weapon, uh, not a uh, support weapon, can move one hex in any direction that they want. So they get into a place that's a little bit safer. So don't want to come down in the jungle. This guy has no choice. He's going to come down somewhere ugly. So he'll go there. This guy will get a little closer to the front. This guy's happy where he is. He'll come down there. He'll try to come down over here. These guys don't want to be coming down there. And these guys are in a lot of trouble. They'll come down here. They'll come down here. Okay. The support weapons cannot do that. They are unguided. So they're done. Now it is defensive first fire and subsequent first fire. For this, only small arms and light AA can shoot at them. Now this is considered hazardous movement before they land. So as an example, this guy will shoot with a six down two at this parachute right here. And they shoot and they get a six. So that'll be a four, it'll be a two morale check. Now, regardless of what's inside, inside of E is an 8.0 liter and two crews. They actually, everybody, while the parachute markers are on the board, have a morale of seven. And you only take one roll for everybody. So they roll a six and it was a two check, so they fail. So the leader is wounded because it's a Japanese leader, and that's what Japanese leaders do. And the other two crews are striped. So now we do wound severity, a four, he's alive. Now, even if that leader had a better uh, morale than the crews, uh, the crews are exempt from leader loss task checks, and the leadership uh, modifiers and benefits do not apply in any case. So they're done. They will subsequent first fire on them. Now they have two, down two, and they roll a seven, which becomes a five. So they have another morale check, and it's a normal morale check, and they roll a seven, which is a pass. So they're fine. The leader will pin, but you do not pin when you are in a parachute. So they are done. We can safely mark them final fire. So the final fire marker, they are done. Okay. So we go on and we shoot some more guys and we have some more damage. And let's say these guys will shoot at this guy. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. So it's a six down two. And they roll a five. So it's a six with a three. So that'll be a K result. So inside of C is one squad. So he will now be a half squad. We'll change him out. And a two check. So he rolls, and he rolls a 10, so he flips, and he does not ELR because he is, by SSR, has a stripe morale, striped underline, underline morale, sorry, not stripe morale. All right, so he is done. He can final fire at him with a two down two, and he rolls a six, which cowers, which becomes a one with a four, which is a normal morale check. He has a morale of eight, but because he's still under the... The um, parachute counter is a seven, so he fails it. So he fails the second morale. He is dead. All right. So let's call it a day for the defensive fire. So once all of that's done, then we have the uh, landing task check or morale check. Everybody landing in good terrain, what I call good terrain, has a task check. Everybody landing in bad terrain has a morale check and everybody landing in horrible terrain dies. So horrible terrain, there's not a lot of, of it. There is um, water obstacle, non-frozen water obstacle, a uh, deeper flooded stream, and a blaze, a blaze. That, I think those are the only four. Bad terrain would be jungler woods, flooded rice paddies, um, cactus, things like that, uh, buildings. Uh, Crag, those would be the bad. Anyway, there's a complete list of them to see. So we've got a couple of them that are coming down in bad terrain, but not more, maybe one of them that's coming down in bad terrain. So now there is a modifier. There is a plus one on your task check or your morale check 
during mild breeze. There's a plus two during gusts or heavy winds. So let's start with this one. So it's a task channel and he has a morale of seven. He rolls a nine. So that um, deploys him. So he, um, he turns into two half squads. Now what happens when he turns into two half squads is he is going to land here and the other one we're going to leave inside in. And since there was a leader in there as well, the leader is going to randomly go with one of the two guys. So he stays with the first guy, so he stays inside the parachute. Okay, so that's it for that one. Now we go to this one, and it's five, he passes, no problem. Then we go to this one, five, he passes, no problem. Then we go to this one, he fails. So one guy down here, and one guy in M. And then, so they scatter, the, the squad does not stay together, in other words. He fails, so he is out. Okay. Oh, sorry, there were crews. And there was a leader with that crew, so let's see uh, which one he stays with. One, he stays in the parachute, the leader. Oh, uh, there was, this was a morale check for these guys. They ended up passing it, but it was a morale check because they were landing in woods, or jungle in this case. Okay, now we're on to this one. And they, let's pretend that's a five, they pass. And this one, a seven, they pass. And then this one, seven, they pass. And this one, Eight, they pass. Uh, they fail because they're even though their morale is eight, they're still under a counter. That's oh, they were crews as well. So those are the guys who got hit before. So we have one saves there. See where the leader goes, and he goes with him. All right, then we have C, and he fails. Oh. I don't know why there's nobody in C. Hmm. Did something wrong there. All right, and then H is good. L is good. F is good. A is good. B is good. Bad. You know what? I messed all those sevens up. Well, let's pretend they passed because there is a plus one on it. And then D is good. All right, so that's it. So now they're down. Now we have defensive final fighter. Now it's not just small arms and light AA fire. Now ordnance and, and other things can fire too. So mortars could fire at them. Um, and then we go to the advanced phase, advanced fire phase, and there's none. The Japanese are not allowed shooting back yet. And then the route phase, the defender only. So the Japanese are not allowed voluntarily breaking. They are not subject to um, surrender. So they do not do the route phase, but the defenders can. The Dutch in this case can. And then we go to the advanced phase. During the advanced phase, we take off our, I don't remember where I took that off from, but we take off our parachutes. And our guys are down unconcealed. Now, note that weapons have to go get retrieved so the Japanese will probably spend their first turn or two trying to pick up all those support weapons now I know what's on all your minds 
What's gonna happen to that guy that landed off board? Oh, that's the O guy. Oh, wow, it's the 10 minus two leader too. Terrible place to be. They get to move once per turn and only one hex. So it will take four, hex, four turns before they're even at the uh, map edge and then they can move normally onto the map edge or advance in normally. So let's just finish getting these guys on the board so we can get a good look at what everything looks like. Oh, and we have to flip all of these parachutes. There's no longer an ID letter, so we don't know where the mortars are. Oh, these two landed in a non-frozen water obstacle, so they are both destroyed. So we can put, and so they lost the medium machine gun and they lost the light machine gun. That's gonna hurt them later on, I'm sure. And we're gonna keep flipping these. Flip, 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 flip. Okay. And we have A goes down here. B moves down here. C comes down here. D e comes down here. And that's it. That's what the map looks like. Now I guess they do normal close combat, and then concealment gain for anybody who's out of line of sight. And then we start the uh, Dutch turn one. Well, thanks so much for watching. I hope I covered everything. I'm sure there's some cases I did not cover, but you'll, you'll just go through the rules. It's only about a page and a half, so it's not so bad. Thanks for watching, everybody.